Hello, hello! Guardian Wolf Kim here with another demo. I do not know what to expect. Whoa, that was loud. Gosh, that scared the tar out of me. Where's the volume? Okay. Let's go to options. Ah, that's a little better. I have no idea what to expect from this game, so yeah, this should prove interesting. Strawberry vinegar. Good game. Feed me or I'll reap your soul. <laughs> After hearing those ridiculous words, my whole life was turned upside down. Day one, Monday. Hey there, Ray. How are you feeling on this beautiful sunny day? I feel fine, thank you. I stifle a yawn with one hand as I slip into my seat at the kitchen table. I'm a responsible girl, so I always wake up early in the morning, but that doesn't mean I like doing it. In fact, I hate it. Sunlight hurts my eyes. I'm forced to turn my head away from the open window and towards the wooden tabletop. I always thought this wooden table clashed with the mercifully white, incredible western decor of our kitchen, but I've gotten used to it over the years. I think this table used to belong to Grandma Nozomi, so Dad would never throw it away. It's a precious keepsake of his mother. Not that she's dead or anything, she's just been refurbishing her house and she got rid of some of her old furniture. I bet other people would find my kitchen weird. Not just my kitchen, but my whole house, which is distinctly non-Japanese. But that doesn't bother me. It's not like I ever invite anybody over. Mom sits at the table, one leg crossed over the other, reading the newspaper. Dad is busy serving breakfast, white rice, pickled cucumbers, and miso soup. Dad's a pretty good cook, so he makes most of the meals at home. He has a whole drawer full of aprons to pick and choose from, and his greatest pleasure in life seems to be selecting which one to wear each morning. Mom, by contrast, doesn't like cooking that much. Her fingernails are long and carefully filed, and she hates it when they splinter or get dirty. Mom is a popular actress, and she cares a lot about her appearance. You might have heard of her. Her name is... Shirakawa Yukin. Mom and Dad are pretty dissimilar, but they get along well enough. I don't think I've ever heard them argue before. I'm glad to know you're feeling all right, Ray, and you'll feel even better after you try this. Breakfast looks good, just like always. The fluffy white rice is perfectly cooked. The pickled cucumbers have been cut into precise coin-shaped shapes, and they've been glazed with vinegar so they seem to shimmer. The miso soup is light brown, neither too thick nor too thin, and it's been bulked up with white cubes of silken tofu and diced brick onions. The onions float lazily on the surface of the soup, while the heavier tofu sinks to the bottom, absorbing the flavor of the fish stock and soybeans. I pick up my chopsticks and bow my head. Thank you for the food. <laughs> There's no need to thank me, Ray. I'd do anything for you. I don't doubt it. Dad likes cooking for me. He doesn't have anyone else to pamper since Mom's always dieting. 
I'm glad Dad likes looking after me, but the look of expectation on his face as I bring my chopsticks to my mouth is kind of disconcerting. He's so obsessed with watching me eat that he hasn't touched his own food at all. If I told him I didn't like his food, I think he'd cry. It's a lot of responsibility to place on the shoulders of an elementary schooler, don't you think? Fortunately, the food tastes just as good as it looks. The pickled cucumbers crunch satisfyingly when I bite into them, and their coolness contrasts nicely with the warm miso soup. So what do you think? Do you like it? Mmm, it's good. Thank goodness. I wasn't too sure about the pickled cucumbers. I usually let them sit in the fridge a little longer. thought the vinegar might be too overpowering. No, it's nice. It goes well with the rice. It creates a good co contrast, I suppose. That's exactly what I was going for. Thank you, Ray. Dad reaches across the table to ruffle the top of my head. He's a little over-enthusiastic with his show of affection. Actually, he almost knocks over Mom's cup of green tea. Careful, dear. Ah, I'm sorry, Yuki. It's alright. Just try to be a bit more attentive next time. And if you're really interested, Dad's name is... Sakuraba Kazuki. Unlike Mom, you've probably never heard of him. There's a reason why Mom and Dad don't have the same family name, but it's not that important. I know it's unusual, but don't worry about it. I don't think my parents ever do. You should try to remember that some of us have filming to do later today. I don't want to turn up with tea all over my new dress. It costs quite a bit, you know. Satu, that grumpy old nag, would have my head if I dared arrive looking less than perfect. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I know how hard you've been working. I don't want to make things more difficult for you. So, uh, did you read anything interesting in the paper? Nothing terribly exciting. Things have been so dull lately. Isn't that a good thing? I prefer it when things are calm and quiet. Well, you may have a point. I was hoping for more bloody murders, though. L let's not talk about murder at the breakfast table, especially around Ray. You'll upset her. I think Ray's old enough to understand the finite nature of human life by now. We all must shuffle off this mortal coil eventually. M maybe so, but we need to be reminded of. Do we need to be reminded of that now? Perhaps not. You're right. Sorry. I've been working on this hospital drama for too long. There are only so many dying teenage girls one can handle in a day. And speaking of work, I gotta get going. I don't want to be late. Mom takes one last sip of her tea, then sets the cup down on the table with a small thud. The life of an actress must be pretty hectic. She's always in a hurry, and she hardly ever seems to have any free time. I wonder if Dad misses her. If he does, he doesn't say it. He always seems unfailingly supportive of Mom and her endeavors. Have a good day, Yuki. Take care of yourself. I will, dear. Mom blows Dad a kiss then pauses by my chair for a few moments. And Ray, I did read something in the paper I thought you might like to hear. What? It said this week should be a particularly eventful for you Virgos. Apparently, you will encounter new friends, have many new experiences, and face a series of great challenges. Doesn't that sound exciting? I guess... Well, I suppose it would be good news if horoscopes were any accurate measure of the world around us. They're always so vague and unfixed. Only superstitious fools set much store in them. But you read them in the newspaper every week. It's because they're romantic. I don't believe in them, but it's nice to imagine that the stars really can determine our fates. I don't get it. It's fine, you don't need to. I was just being silly. Mom winks. I bet all the boys in my class would love it if she winked like that at them. I think they all have crushes on her. Even some of my teachers have crushes on her. I just thought I should warn you, if horoscopes are at all accurate, you might be in for quite an interesting week. Mom exits the kitchen with a small laugh. She waves at us over her shoulder, but she doesn't turn around. She's far too cool for that. I know Dad certainly thinks so. Even after all these years, Yuki is still so mysterious. She's so cool. See, I told you so. Unlike Mom, Dad's really predictable. I can always preempt what he's going to say. 
I rise from my seat and walk over to the fridge. I feel like having a glass of milk, though it doesn't go well with miso soup. Milk is nice and refreshing, and it helps keep the bones strong. But the milk that should be there is not. It's vanished. You can't have drunk it that quickly, though. Because there was a full carton of it yesterday. Was this the work of a thief? A poltergeist? Or else... Dad? Were you giving our milk away to the neighborhood cats again? <laughs> so you caught me out, huh? Totally predictable, like I said. I I'm sorry, Ray. I'll buy you some milk from the store later if you want any. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll get some of myself on the way back from school. But, but since I'm the one who gave all the milk away, I should be the one to buy more, shouldn't I? Don't worry about it. I meant to buy some things from the convenience store anyway. This will give me an excuse to finally do it. Ah, I see. How clever. Not really. Anyway, I'm heading out now. This Monday morning really is the same as last Monday morning, and the one before that, and the one before that. Nothing out of the ordinary has happened, and it'll probably stay that way. Horoscopes. What a load of nonsense. School is dull, just as always. I try to focus, but it's a sunny day and the characters in my textbook start blurring together. I rub my eyes with the back of my arm, but it makes no difference. What's wrong with me today? Window seats like mine are regarded with great jealousy by my fellow classmates, but I hate sitting here. These seats are good if you want to waste your education staring into the sky, trying to look mysterious, but they're not so good if you actually want to take notes. When lunchtime rolls around, I end up sitting alone, as per usual. The room fills with chatter, but I don't say a word. My lips remain clamped together. I only open them so I can eat my lunch. It's not like I'm lonely or anything, though, so please don't misunderstand. I'm not being bullied, either. I could go and talk to people if I wanted to. I just don't. I like being on my own. My mother's pretty famous, so I get asked questions about her a lot. It's always, your mother's so pretty, Ray, or could your mother introduce me to Yamada, Ray? Or just how rich is your mother anyway, Ray? It's never, how are you today, Ray? Could you help me with my homework, Ray? Or did you catch the TV show that was on yesterday evening, Ray? Nobody asks me about me. That's probably because they're not interested in me. I learned that a long time ago. My horoscope this morning might have said something about making new friends, but I don't want any friends, new or old. In all honesty, I can't stand other people. Ah, uh, I think they should be finished by now. Put my pen down and get to my feet, stretching. The bones in my arms click alarmingly. I wonder if I should take this as a sign. Maybe I should drink some more milk. Well, that's not my fault. I try to drink my milk, but somebody keeps getting in the way. Does Dad care about the homeless cats that stalk our streets more than he cares about me? His only daughter? I wouldn't put it past him. He goes berserk over anything small, cute, and fluffy. Well, I bought some milk on the way home from school, so I guess I can have a glass of it now. It wasn't the only thing I bought, either. I also picked up some butter, cocoa powder, and eggs. Most people don't know this. I don't have anybody to tell, but I really like baking. It's a hobby I picked up from Dad, since he's always in the kitchen. I didn't go to kindergarten when I was a kid. I stayed home with Dad, and he looked after me. I was too small to see over the top of the kitchen counters back then, so Dad got me a stool to stand on. I don't need that stool anymore, but I think we still have it lying around the house somewhere. Dad isn't the most reliable of people, but he was a good teacher. Some might question the safety of giving a four-year-old girl a sharp knife or letting her stir soup over the oven, but Dad kept a careful eye on me, and I never cut or burned myself. He taught me a lot of useful things, like how to peel potatoes, how to cut onions without crying, and how to tell when chicken is cooked all the way through. 
Baking was always my favorite, though. I tried sprinkling flour over the counters and rolling out dough with the wooden pen. I especially liked cutting out shapes in the dough with all the different cookie cutters Dad had stashed away in the kitchen cupboards. I used to feel rewarded when the cookies or pies or pastries Dad and I would just came out of the oven, piping hot, ready to be eaten. I still enjoy baking now. That's what I was doing earlier before I made a start on my homework. Saw these cute cookies on TV that look like little chess boards set with alternating black and white squares. As soon as I saw them, I knew I had to try making them. The sweet smell of warm dough that drifts from downstairs is delicious. It's almost like it's calling out to me. I hum to myself in higher spirits than usual as I head downstairs. Wonder what I should eat my cookies with. Milk is always a good choice. Warm cookies fresh out of the oven, so hot they scald the fingertips, are even more delicious when paired with cool, refreshing milk. But, ah, uh, but maybe I could try coffee instead. The bitterness of coffee beans mixed with the sweetness of the cookies would create a great contrast. Then again, hot chocolate might be nice, too. There's so many options, it's hard to pick just one. But when I open the kitchen door... I see something, or rather, or someone, rather, who definitely shouldn't be there. It's a girl. She looks about my age, maybe slightly younger. Her hair is short and blonde, curling around her face like a halo. I don't think I've ever seen somebody with such pretty hair before. Her hair isn't the only unusual thing about her, though. Far from it. Is it just my imagination, or does she have curly horns protruding from the top of her head? And just there, peeking out from the bottom of her shirt, is that a tail? Mmm, human food really is delicious. I look at the oven, the door is wide open, and the tray of cookies that should be baking inside, it is not. Somebody must have stolen my cookies. With my incredible deductive skills, it doesn't take me very long to work out who the culprit is. Hey, who are you, and what do you think you're doing in my house? Ah! The girl blinks. Her eyes are bright red like precious jewels. Her eyelashes, however, are so pale they're almost white. If those eyelashes weren't there to offset her burning irises, I might be frozen to the spot or turned to stone. The girl crunches the last cookie, my cookie, between her teeth and swallows. Then she gets to her feet and stabs an accusatory finger in my direction. What, what are you doing here? Why is she talking like I'm the one who broke into her house? Doesn't she have any decency? Judging by her ridiculous outfit, maybe not. What do you mean, what am I doing here? What are you doing here? I, um, came here on an important mission. To eat the cookies I just made? No, that, that was just collateral. What are you talking about? I'm saying you're very, very lucky. <clears throat> My name is Licia Dia Loveless, and I am a demon from the deepest, darkest depths of hell. I was sent here to reap your soul. Silence descends. I stare at her. She stares back. Of all the ridiculous things, I certainly didn't expect that. My soul? That's right. However, since I'm a nice demon, I'll give you another chance to redeem yourself. I'll stay with you for a week. If you can make me something nice to eat every single day, then I'll let you live. Feed me, or I'll reap your soul. How does that sound? Is she seriously asking me that? She's asking me what I think? You want to know what I think? I think if you really are a demon, you should know what I'm thinking already. Ah, uh, you've got it all wrong. I can't read minds. That's a really high-level skill. Don't you have any magical powers at all? Why don't you try showing them to me? Maybe I'll believe you then. Um, I'm sorry, but I'm only a young demon. I'm not very good at using magic yet. If I tried, I'd probably hurt you. Anyway, 
If you don't make me lots of delicious food, I really will, Reaper Soul. I'm not kidding around. I'm being serious. Is my soul so cheap it's only worth a few cookies? Granted, they were pretty nice cookies. At least I assume they were, since I never actually got to eat any of them, but still. I'd like to think that a genuine human soul carries a higher price than that on the black market. Otherwise, I might start questioning the worth of my own life. Oh no, of course not. Human souls are precious things. That's why I'm asking you to let me stay here. If you don't want me to steal your soul, then you should try to make me lots of delicious food to balance out the books. You say that, but I think you're just being greedy. Maybe. We can't get what we want in life unless we ask for it. That's what Luce Riza tells me, and she's super smart. She's made a killing on the stock market. I don't know who this Luce Riza person is, but I don't ask. I have other things on my mind. Okay, you know what? I'm going to refuse. Yeah, right. Like, I'm going to let a girl who claims to be a demon stay in my home. But, but, why not? Because I have no idea who you are. You're a complete stranger. Letting you stay here would be just asking for trouble. But I'm not a stranger. I already told you I'm Alicia. I'm not a bad person, I promise. But you just threatened to read my soul. Oh yeah, I guess I did say something like that, huh? I'm not staying. I actually believe you're a demon or anything, but I can't afford to take any chances. I know what happens to people who make contracts with demons. But I already said I wouldn't steal your soul if you made me food. If you refuse, you'll definitely regret it. So she's threatening me again, huh? Well, that's nothing new. Even so, I can't help but wonder, why does she look so troubled? Is it because she can't stand the thought of not getting what she wants? Or is there something more serious going on here? Did we enter into an unspoken arrangement when she ate my cookies? I didn't sign any contracts with my own blood, but maybe her saliva was enough to connect our souls together. Should I change my mind now, while I still have the chance? Nope. <laughs> no, I won't change my mind. I said I wasn't going to let you stay with me, and I don't like going back on my word. But, but why? What did I do wrong? You did everything wrong. For one thing, you broke into my house. I didn't break in. This is just where the intermediate portal led me. It was a coincidence. And secondly, you ate all my cookies and you didn't even apologize. But I couldn't help myself. They looked so yummy. And thirdly, you threatened to reap my soul. Didn't your parents ever tell you it's wrong to reap souls indiscriminately? There has to be some kind of system. You'll never make any friends like that. But I... I... The girl called Lucia sniffs. She isn't crying, is she? I relent, feeling a faint tugging at my heartstrings. Maybe I was a little too hard on her. No, I can't afford to feel any sympathy. I might have been too harsh in my scolding, but all my points are perfectly valid. It's not like I ever threatened to reap her soul. It's a good thing I have strong nerves, or that declaration of hers might have seriously shaken me. I don't know very much about briefing, befriending people. I, um, I don't have many of those. Yes, I can see why. Hey, th that's really mean. You could try to be a bit nicer. Maybe I would be nicer if you'd extended the same courtesy to me. Unfortunately, I have no hospitality to spare for a rude, thieving, selfish little girl like you. You... you... Lucia stares at my back for a few moments, her body trembling like a newborn kitten's. Then, with a renewed burst of energy... You monster! Devil! Demon! Your cookies tasted so nice, but you're the meanest girl I've ever met. Lucia pushes past me and runs right out of the kitchen. I only catch a brief glimpse of her as she runs away, but I know with a twisting sensation in the pit of my stomach that her eyes are filled with tears. Did I really make her cry? Well, it's not like any of my concern, really. It isn't. This has nothing to do with me. I have no interest in this girl called Lysia. All I want to do is live a normal life, and I intend to do just that. Even if it is dull, even if it's boring, even if it's monotonous. That's just how it goes. I shift about in bed, trying to get to sleep, but to no avail. No matter how I toss and turn, I can't get comfy. I wonder what time it is. It's pitch black in here, and I can't hear any noise from the street outside. No cars, no conversation. I'm sure it must be past midnight. Blinking blearily, I sit up in bed, rubbing my eyes with the back of my arm. According to the clock, balanced atop my bookshelf, it's just gone three. Unfortunately, my clock is a liar. 
The battery in it has been dead for a while and its hands have been frozen in that position for weeks. I stretch and yawn. My head feels heavy as though it's been stuffed full of newspaper and it pounds. I can feel the blood pumping through my body, pulsing. Ever since I met her, I can't stop thinking about her. That girl. Lucia. Her eyes were bright red, just like Jules. Her nail, her hair was pale blonde, like falling ash. Her skin was white as snow and snowy. She said she was a demon from hell. I don't know if I believe her. It's true she had horns and a tail, but there's no guarantee they were real. In fact, the more I think about it, the less sure I am about what I really saw. Maybe I was just hallucinating. But I do remember her eyes. Every time I close my own, I can see them, almost as though they've been tattooed on my eyelids. Those bright red, burning eyes. No human being could have eyes like that, even with contact lenses. It's just not possible. Does that mean that Lysia really is a demon? She's a demon and I threw her out of my house. I don't feel guilty about it. I know I was doing the right thing. Any sane person would take the same steps I had done if they were in my shoes. In fact, any sane person would have called the police. Telling Lysia to leave really was the best choice. There was nothing else I could have done, was there? I didn't do anything bad, so why should I feel guilty? Why then am I lying awake right now, unable to sleep, my thoughts looping back to Lysia over and over again? My heart pounds in my chest, a series of dull thumps that sound far too loud, yet strangely lifeless. My room is too hot, it's stifling, the air feels thick, like a tangible object, something I could hold in the palms of my hands. I'm sweating. It feels like something is going to happen. But what? And just as this unpleasant thought flashes across my mind. Why, hello there. Don't you think the moon is particularly beautiful tonight? I see a woman sitting on my bedroom windowsill. A woman who certainly wasn't there before. The curtains, which I swear were closed, flutter around her like a shroud. Four corners of the window frame her, as though she's a figure from a watercolor painting. Her hair is long, light blonde, and falls over her shoulders in waves. Her skin is milky white, glowing underneath the moonlight. She's gorgeous, but strangely ethereal in her beauty. Looks like she comes from a different world to my own. In fact, I think she does. Just like Lycia, she has curly horns and a tail, and her eyes are deep burning bright red. I stare at her, unable to speak. In the silence, broken by the sound of the wind outside, my heart continues to pound far, far, far too loudly. Is your name Ray? I am... Um... The direct question unsticks my throat. I try to swallow down my own anxiety, but it tastes sour on my tongue. But that's right, I'm Ray. Oh, good. The woman nods her head as though we're having a genial chat about the weather. She looks completely at ease at one with the dark night and the shining moon. I'm so glad this is the right house. So many things have gone wrong tonight, I was beginning to doubt. But no matter. My name is Aurora... Superbia Liveless. I believe you met my cute little sister a few hours ago, is that correct? I... I... That, that's right. Good, now we're getting somewhere. Aurora sighs. Though her eyes are bright red, they look oddly cold, without any shred of warmth or compassion. She hates me. That much is staggeringly obvious. I simply cannot believe that a mere human like you would have the audacity to be so cruel to my poor little Lysia. She was so distraught about the incident earlier. It quite broke my heart. Did you know that you made her cry? I... I didn't mean... Hush. If you did not mean to upset her, then you would not have been so cruel. Aurora flips a few strands of blonde hair behind her shoulder dismissively. 
Her voice is no longer light and breezy. It's just as merciless as her red eyes. I shiver. I have no concrete proof, but I'm sure this woman wields a great deal of power. Power that a mere human, as she called me, could never hope to understand. She's dangerous. Every single detail of her, from those red eyes to that bitter scowl, screams, Stay away from me. Even more effectively than the bright red skin of a poisonous toad that lives in the Amazon rainforest. This woman is like a... This woman is a being a human like me cannot comprehend. A being that a human like me should not possibly hope to escape from. Do you not know about the Liveless family? We're one of, the, one of the most important families to govern hell, and I will not stand for my little sister to be humiliated in such a way, especially not by a little whelp like you. I... I, I didn't realize. Of course you didn't. You're only a stupid human. And now, it's too late. My heart hammers in my chest so hard I fear it might burst. Never in all my nine years of life did I expect something like this would happen. Who would? It is against protocol for a demon such as myself to visit humans like this, but I don't mind bending the rules for the sake of my family's honor. I... I'm sorry? I do not care for apologies. They are only offered as a last resort when the damage has been done, and they rarely fix anything they cannot cure. They only seek to lessen the pain of a blow that was already dealt. In that case, a verbal apology is no good. It certainly will not satisfy me. The only apology I will accept from you will be your soul. Of course it is. I should have expected as much, given this woman really is a demon. I didn't find Lucia's demands for my mortal soul too threatening, but it's different when it comes from the lips of this woman. This woman, I can believe. This woman, I can fear. I know that she isn't joking. She's not just going to scare me. She's telling the truth. She really does want to reap my soul, and there's nothing I can do about it. I have no doubt your soul will be a half-formed and immature little thing, not yet raised to its full potential, but I will take it nevertheless. Maybe that will ease my little sister's pain, and her tears will dry, and she will be happy again. Aurora steps down from the window sill and crosses my bedroom with several quick steps. I can only stare at her, my eyes wide, my back pressed against my bedroom wall. There are questions I want to ask her. Of course there are, but I can't force any of them out of my throat. I can't even breathe. Dead end. <laughs> well there you go so yeah <laughs> I had a feeling I was choosing the bad ending with that but I wanted to know what happened I was curious so this is an interesting interesting demo uh, kind of fun uh, I could tell that this is more of a novella kind of thing and so there's not going to be anything but just reading the story. Which, that's fine, but I have to be in the mood for something like that. Well, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you're wondering about this game, now you have a little bit of an idea. <laughs> so until next time, bye!